so final round of the Mitre 10 Cup regular season. I believe it was week 9. Um, all done and dusted. Apologies, this video is a, um, a day later than normal. Uh, covering the European games has kind of put my uh, schedule off kilter a little bit. But uh, yeah, we'll see how we go with these games. Also, interestingly, before I make these Mitre 10 Cup videos, I always like to to go back and watch the highlights of all the games, the ones that I watched in full and the ones that I didn't see any of, the ones that I saw bits of. I, I watched them all again on the highlights just to refresh my memory. Um, but YouTube is down as I record this, or at least it was um, just before I, uh, I left work. So yeah, those videos are hosted on YouTube, so I haven't had a chance to go and review those, those games. So sorry if um, there's a little bit less uh, on the detail but we're still covering a bunch of games quickly anyway so we never go that kind of deep on the games in uh, in the Mitre 10 Cup. But I'll go over the results and see where that leads us. Uh, the first one, uh, Southland went down to Auckland 56 points to 8. I believe this game was the one that unfortunately for Southland fans put uh, them on the longest losing streak in NPC history which is not um, not ideal. Uh, from memory, um, old Harry Plummer looked alright in this one. It seems to be getting better. Although, again, I haven't seen the highlights, so um, I can't remember. It's been that long ago. Uh, the next one, Tasman. Oh, that, one brought, that result, by the way, was important for Auckland in securing top spot on the log. Uh, the next one, Tasman. Uh, we're looking to secure a home playoff game. Uh, beat Hawks by 29 points to nil. All I remember about this one is it being wet, 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 wet. Like, you know when you're watching at home and you can see the rain? Like, if you can see it on the TV cameras, you know it is absolutely bucketing down at the venue because when it's only raining a little bit, you often don't see it from that main kind of wide shot. It's only on the, the ground level cameras that you can really see it. But this one, you could see the rain just from every angle. It looked like a pretty atrocious um, bit of... Um, you know whether the play was loose but um kind of to be expected 29 points to nil tasman do the job they needed to do uh next one wellington and taranaki this was an important one for taranaki they had to win this one to give them themselves, uh, themselves a chance to avoid relegation it's not been their season man couldn't get it done the shield's gone and they have been relegated 34 points to 10 wellington have gone in and won uh, that was the game where we got to see uh, Dane Coles back. So that was good. Uh, from memory, this is the one where Jesse Parete was... Uh, I know he gets... like He tries to be a bit of like the enforcer or like the pest to try and get on guys' nerves, but I think he needs to rein it in sometimes because at times it's a detriment to his team. Uh, the next one, Bayer Plenty, Northland, uh, 38 points to 35. Pretty close game, but... Uh, from memory, uh, Northland scored a bunch of points at the end to kind of bring the scoreline closer than it was. Like they wanted time to kick the ball off right at the end to have a chance to win it, but it was already too late because they scored like two tries in the last like three minutes. So uh, it was 26 points to seven at half time. So bad, plenty, big lead, enough to hold on. Uh, I think Chase Tia Tia uh, got a try in that game from memory. Uh, I'm going to say from memory a lot during this video. Um, but yeah, I guess a good win for Bayer Bay Plenty because it's not been the best season for them either. So kind of good to send the season out on a high. Uh, next one, Waikato against Otago. Ran fairly shield game. Switched hands. So Otago just that one chance to lock it up for the summer. And they did it. 23 points to 19. Um, Waikato has been in scintillating form. But this game was just something different. Maybe the, the length of the season is starting to catch up with them because, yeah, just not not enough to get it done. Uh, one of the Koroi brothers got a try. I remember that. Um, but, yeah, a bit disappointing from Waikato. They seemed, um, Sweeney seemed pretty gutted at the end to have to hand over the log wood. Uh, but congratulations to Otago, man. That's, um, that's a massive result for them in terms of the season and in terms of getting the shield because who doesn't love having the shield locked up? Uh, next one, Counties against Canterbury, 14 points to 19, pretty low scoring game. Uh, all I really remember about this one, it was the battle between Laulala and Moody. 
and Lalala seemed to be in the top of, of on top of Moody. Uh, he was getting a lot of penalties at scrum time. I seem to remember counties putting pressure on the uh, Canterbury in their own kind of 22, and counties were saying like, "Yeah, we'll take a scrum, we'll take a scrum, we'll take a scrum," which never happens against Canterbury. So uh, that was crazy, but. Uh, not enough. Canterbury, importantly, in that one, missed out on a bonus point, which was, in the scheme of things, I don't think it mattered, but it could have been important in terms of trying to get themselves uh, a home a home playoff spot. Didn't matter in the end. Uh, because Auckland in the Battle of the Bridge beat North Harbour 45 points to 29. Uh, that's the one that puts them on top of the log, so they're going to be home uh, for this next game. Uh, Rousey got a couple of tries. Uh, North Harbour by this stage actually had nothing to play for because the other results had not gone their way. So, um, yeah, I guess it doesn't matter to them that they lost, but still you never want to lose to your rivals, which is what ended up happening. And the last one, Southland's final chance to get a win for the season. Didn't quite pan out. Manawatu getting it done 38 points to 26. I saw the Manawatu guys at the end of this game. I think Lamapi got a couple of tries in this one. The Manawatu guys at the end of the game kind of saying they're pretty disappointed with the way the season's gone and they appreciate the fans kind of coming out because, uh, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't the best season. They, they probably could have done a bit better, but things just didn't quite click. So, yeah, that was the result of the round. So that leaves us with the playoffs. Uh, first game is going to be Waikato against Northland. That's going to be an interesting one because Northland's been having a good run this season and Waikato have just slipped up in this last game. So... We'll see if they're kind of able to bounce back. Tasman against Canterbury is a mouth-watering one because that's your two Crusaders. Uh, you know, the two teams which make up the Crusaders. So that's going to be, um, you know, good rivalry between those guys. So that should be a pretty heated one. Auckland against Wellington up in Auckland. That's going to be some, uh, some big-name players involved in that one. And lastly, Otago against Hawke's Bay. Uh, Otago, I think, will have to be the favourites at home, but I guess we'll see how things go. Uh, yeah, if you guys can remember what happened in the games pretty much a week ago now, uh, let me know what I've missed, because there's definitely going to be a fair bit. And uh, how do you think these four playoff games are going to go? Um, yeah, we'll see how things go. Uh, I think it was the first time Aucklander finished the top since 2007, they said. So, as an Aucklander, kind of happy days, but they've got to do it in the playoffs before we can celebrate anything. Anyway, congrats again to Otago for getting the shield, and um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.